Hi, I'm Paul Hunt, and I'm a proud member of the European SharePoint community. In this video, you'll learn how to use JS Link and Display Templates to make your list views more visually appealing. So, just what is wrong with our list currently? Well, inherently, there's nothing wrong with them. They're, after all, just lists of information. But as human beings, you know, we're visual creatures. We like information to jump out, to pop to us. Um, and just why is this? Well, 90% of the information transmitted to our brain is visual. Perhaps a better way to visualize that is a pie chart. You know, in the cerebral cortex itself, the neurons devoted to visual processing number in the hundreds of millions and take up 30% of the cortex. When you compare, compare that with hearing, which has just 8% of neurons and 3% for touch. So one of the effects for this is the pictorial superiority effect. Um, because the brain is more adept at recognizing images, um, image, images generate both a, a, an image and a verbal reaction and a memory, rather than just a verbal one that you get with words. So you're inherently more likely to remember and act on that information. So what is our visual goal? Well, certainly to visualize our goal in the SharePoint world, we tend to use wireframes. So I've presented a simple wireframe here of how I want my FAQ list to appear. We're going to use a large icon to visually show the user what type of FAQ entry is they're looking at. So we've got choices in there for questions, how to's, warnings. Um, and then we can see the text of the FAQ entry. So this is where our question title appears. Um, and finally, we can see the familiar star rating with the most popular items at the top of the list. For our simple demo, each row in our list view will simply open up the FAQ entry in a mobile dialogue when it's clicked on. However, there's nothing to stop us using things like hover panels, which are used to good effect in search. And we can show things like answer summaries so that people can just, you know, hover the mouse over the question, get an idea is, you know, is this actually the one I want? Um, or we can even put other information, perhaps even search results, etc. So what better way to learn this than to see it? So let's take a look at a demo now. OK, so here we are in our uh, SharePoint site and you can see I've got uh, an FAQ list here of several items and we're just using a standard out of the box custom list. I've turned on ratings. Uh, in fact, let's have a look at the list settings. Uh, so the first thing I've done in ratings, I've turned on and allowed items in this list to be rated and I've turned on star ratings. Um, now, I think for an FAQ, this is actually quite important because it allows your users to denote the quality of the item. So the more obviously the more people that rate an item, uh, perhaps the more applicable it is for people. Um, it certainly has an impact on your search results. So it's uh, worth bearing in mind. Um, now, I'm using a content type. And the main reason for this is this demo actually was going to be used for um, showing how FAQ could be used across the board. So across site collections using search. Um, so you certainly don't have to use a content type. You do, however, need to use um, site columns. And the main reason being is for this publishing HTML. Um, so that's only available to you if you create a site column. You can't create a list column and use the publishing HTML type. Um, and the key reason for using this, if I go back to our main list, is the ability to embed pictures into our items. I also have a couple of other columns that I didn't talk about there of FAQ type and technology. Um, so FAQ type is what we're going to use to actually drive the icon that will be shown down the left hand side. Um, and the technology one really plays a part in both the, the metadata navigation um, and search in the future if we decide to use search. So if you're not familiar with metadata navigation, on the left hand side in the quick launch here, you'll see I have our IT FAQ list and we've got fact type and technology. If I come down to technology, you'll see we've got basically a hierarchical version of uh, our metadata. Um, so if I click on SharePoint, it just restricts down to the list of just all those items tagged with SharePoint. Um, or we can go even lower to the particular list item. Um, likewise, we can do the same for FAQ. We can say, right, show me all the how to's, all the critical entries, etc. So that's our list. So how do we actually apply our display template? So if I just very quickly switch to SharePoint Designer, um, I'm in the all items view here, the all files view, um, and I've uploaded our display template into underscore catalogs, master page, display templates. Now, you don't have to put them here if you decide to deploy your share to, um, your templates through a SharePoint solution. Um, you can push them into the 15 hive, uh, sorry, the 15 root, as we must call it now. 
Um, personally, I, you know, I'm gearing this towards IT pros and not necessarily developers. So you can, as you can see, push them through SharePoint Designer straight into the display templates. Um, and if we just edit this file in advanced mode, um, you can see it's just a, a short JavaScript file. I'm not going to go too in depth here as to what's involved. I'm going to put the script um, and make it available for download at the end of this session. Um, there's several blog posts that go deep into what this all this code does. Um, Wes Preston has a very good primer on the basic uses of display templates. I've blogged quite heavily around some of the uses and some of the, the problems you may encounter. Um, so again, I'm going to put some links on the last pages of the uh, the slideshow that will accompany this and you'll be able to get to that. But one of the things I do want to point to is I'm just going to come down to actually where we define our custom item. I'm just going to talk about some of the things that happen here. So primarily here I'm actually using our FAQ type field um, and the reason here is I want to be able to display different images. Now I've only set up the how to with the question here um, but I also was going to display things like the critical image that sort of thing. So we're going to change that icon based on the information in the list and this is where we start to drive that visual sort of appeal of the item. Um, I'm also having to rebuild some of the ratings because of the way they work. Uh, that doesn't matter. Again this um, it's not important as to how this works. You guys can can play with this. You, you'll get the idea once you start looking at some of the templates. Um, and again, at the, towards the end, I'm going to talk about a, a community involvement project that makes some of these templates available to you. And uh, we've got a lot of support from some of the, the guys who are, are doing a lot of display template work um, around the community, which is great. So we've got our display template uploaded into the site. And if I just switch back to our web page again, um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this page. Now this is the all items view. Um, you don't have to use the list view itself. If you want to, you can put a list view web part on another page and you can add the display template to that. Um, you can add the display template to the view itself for our PowerShell. Um, obviously that's not an option if you're on Office 365. Um, but for now all I've done is I've edited the all items view. Um, so I'm just going to edit this page. And then we're going to edit this web part. And so we're actually interested in the web part properties here and down in the miscellaneous, if you scroll down, you can see a few options here. So uh, quite an interesting one here is XSL link. So for those of you that said XSL is dead, uh, I'm afraid you're very wrong. Um, you can still use XSL if you choose. Um, you just need to make sure you tick this server render box. Um, and that basically puts the, the emphasis on the XSL being rendered server side rather than client side. Obviously Microsoft are pushing everything to the client side. Um, certainly in Office 365 they don't really want you using XSL. Um, so to that end we've got this JS link down here. Now I've already got my link in here just with a space in to make it not work and that's quite a key troubleshooting thing. If the list doesn't change and you've got this link already in here, one of two things has happened. Either your JS link doesn't work, um, you've got the URL wrong, something like that, so you're, you're actually not loading the JavaScript. Um, or there's an error in the JavaScript and what will basically happen is SharePoint will just apply the normal view and it will ignore your link. So two ways to troubleshoot that. One is to have Fiddler open so you can actually see that your JavaScript is being loaded. Um, and the other thing is to actually use the developer tools within IE to actually step through your code. And certainly it's a lot easier doing that now than it used to be in XSL. So I'm just going to take that space out of there and say OK. And you can see now that straight away, if I stop editing, we've now got our list um, rendering properly. And if I click on the FAQ type, you can see that these are changing according to the information. And likewise, we're still getting the same behavior if I click on the, uh, the, men the metadata values. So that's great. So if I actually click on an item, um, we're going to get a page not found. And the reason is I've actually altered the behavior of this item now. So instead of it clicking to the normal display page, it's going to a new page called show item. Um, and the main reason for doing that is I want to actually remove the, some of the information that's being shown because again, we don't want to overload our users with a lot of information. So back in uh, SharePoint Designer, we're, uh, we're going to go to our list and library. I'm going to go to our IT FAQ. Now you can see I've already created a page here, but basically the process is quite simple. We click on new. Uh, we type in the name for our page here and we're interested in a display item form. So we click on that and we click OK. Um, and that basically gives us um, our show item file. So I edit this in uh, advanced mode. Now I've made a few changes to this page. Uh, if I just scroll very quickly back to the top, um, I've hidden the ribbon. 
I've hidden the labels down the left hand side and I've also hidden individual rows um, so if we come down to the title the short answer I've just used some CSS to hide that um, and the main reason for doing this is that again we don't want to overload our user with information so if we now click on this item you can see we've got our ratings control at the top and this is active so we can click on this and it will generate a rating um, we've spread out the amount of information that's displayed across the page and we've removed the things like the title the short answer so I think you can agree that's uh, um, definitely a much more effective um, page okay so that's the end of our demo so uh, what we'll do now is we'll just pop back to the slides and we'll close off just with a couple of those okay so we've seen the demo and I, I hope that's really sparked some ideas about what display templates can do for you um, they're very powerful I've been doing some SharePoint Saturday sessions um, showing how these can be integrated with things like high charts so um, providing sort of dynamic data driven charts just fresh from list views um, you can use them with external content types as well so you can pull in external data um, so anyway if you'd like the display template that I used there I've put that on this uh, short bitly link that will download the zip file that will include a couple of the images um, the CSS etc so you can have a play with um, I haven't got the page layout built for that um, to be quite honest the best bet is just build yourself a show item play around with some of the um, CSS that I showed you in the video um, and just see how that works for you uh, one last thing I'd like to put up is the um, SharePoint community the SPCSR um, so the thing around this is don't reinvent the wheel you know look at reusing what people have done um, around display templates so we're on Facebook facebook.com slash hash SPCSR um, and the actual repository is on github.com again slash SPCSR um, have a look at those um, if you've got any queries please reach out to me on Twitter um, I'm more than happy to help out where I can um, and other words thank you very much for listening I hope it's been beneficial and I look forward to presenting to you guys again soon thanks very much <laughs>